Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and going to kind of highlight some things that are happening in the world. And uh, so we'll kind of go a little bit rapid here. Sputnik uh, International has put out an article that confirms what I've been sharing with you guys now for, oh gosh, I don't know, what, six months or even longer. Poland, as I stated from Intel sources, fifth largest military power in the world. They are, the, the tune of the weapons that have been poured into Poland has been unbelievable. And quite frankly, I believe the reason for this is because they know when Ukraine falls, Poland is stepping in next to fulfill that battle against Russia. And so they've been getting Poland ready from the very beginning. Another set, well, put another set of Slova, uh, Slavic people there in that battle that Edward Hudeau said that would go against Ukraine. But now, too, they're going to use Poland to kind of annex Western Ukraine. Russia, no doubt, will end up getting eastern Ukraine at the end of the day. Poland will end up taking the western side of it, but NATO is getting that country ready. Well, to back up what I said, Poland, the biggest army in the EU and the biggest risk in the making is the title of the article here. Uh, and there is a lot of information in here, including the Polish foreign minister, uh, Radzlaw uh, Sikorsky, Sikorsky stunned the public when he said several NATO countries already have their troops in Ukraine. Well, that's including Polish troops, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Uh, he represents the pro-EU Liberal Party civic platform, which recently replaced the anti-European nationalists uh, from the Law and Justice Party by voicing the shocking remark. Sarkovsky was effectively attempting to outdo the media star for the previous cabinet formed by the PIS. And the media star was uh, Blaznozek. I can't say that name right. Anyway, uh, another thing that was pointed out, in fact, uh, Sarkovsky's statement about NATO troops in Ukraine was not much of a secret for Russia. Even Sarkovsky attempt to create intrigue by saying he would not reveal the troops' countries of origin was a failure. That's because Maria Zakharova, the foreign minister, or, or the, who works in the foreign ministry of Russia, acknowledged that Russia knew about the presence of Western uh, uh, servicemen in which countries they came from, even in the United States. But we use private contractors to do it, so it's less obvious. And it's also for deniability. She said it does not make sense for NATO to, to deny it sending soldiers to Ukraine anymore. Uh, but let's get into this issue about these numbers here. Uh, it says here, to the official uh, commentary and by ignoring, let's see. According to official data from Blazek's defense ministry in 2023 alone, Poland bought 1,000 K-2 tanks from South Korea, 673 kilogram howitzers from the same supplier, from the United States, Poland purchased 366 Abram tanks and 32 F-35A fighter jets. You know, John Moore mentioned in his program uh, uh, this morning, I was on with him, he said that was pretty dumb of uh, Poland to get the F-35s, he said, because they can't do very well in storms. He said they'd have been much better getting an F-15 or even an F-16, for that matter, there to fight in the in any kind of battles because you can fight in storms with those. You can't do it with the F-35A. And uh, he said, so there goes a waste of money. Anyway, if Blazak's plans are fulfilled by 2030, Poland will have more tanks than the combined forces of the UK, Germany, France, Italy, Netherlands, and Belgium. The Wall Street Journal reported in an article headline, Poland hardens its defense against Russia. In 2023, Poland spent $23 billion on defense purposes, a sum that makes up 4% of the country's GDP against the NATO required 2%. Well, in that case, Donald Trump will have your back. Otherwise, pay up, because if you don't pay up, you don't get any defending. It sounds like thugs in the old days, right? I guess it just hasn't much, hasn't changed. Anyway, these uh, uh, the Polish elites are trying to talk Poles into spending more money on arms for Ukraine and increasing the power of the native Polish army. Blazak's plan was to increase the staff of the Polish army from the current 172,000 men to 300,000. The time frame for the reform is intended to proceed between two and three years. And this is one of the uh, few initiatives the outgoing PIS party, which new liberal Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk 
promises to continue. So as I stated, now I've got a little bit of backing, and of course they did cite that one article as well uh, in the United States there that also bringing that information out there. So wanted to share that with you. Also, a large fire broke out near St. Petersburg Airport. Uh, closed. Authorities blame a drone attack from Ukraine for that. Uh, and then uh, we also have Russia's weatherman says conditions ideal for nuclear strike on NATO. Newsweek reporting this here. And uh, see if we can't. Um, let's see. Well, we can do without the music side of that. Anyway, uh, speaking of Moscow, Russian president said Russia won't let anyone interfere in its international affairs. Um, he warned that was a genuine risk of a nuclear war if Western nations send troops to Ukraine, as suggested by French President Emmanuel Macron. Western nations must realize that we also have weapons that can hit targets on their territory. All they're really threat threatens a conflict. Whoa. A little bit too quick, hang on. Threatens a conflict with the use of nuclear weapons and destruction of civilization. Don't they get that? Putin, a senior Russian official, have report, repeatedly threatened nuclear escalation against Kiev. Uh, and its Western partners since mostly launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine back in February of 2022. NATO leaders, particularly on the alliance long frontier with Russia, are increasingly warning that direct conflict with Moscow uh, is a realistic danger, suggesting the West has between three and ten years to prepare for war. If they have that much, I don't. I don't see it being that much there. Um, oh, let's see. I was trying to find the part there where they got the part on there about that uh, the weatherman saying that. But anyway, just wanted to share that headline with you. Uh, RT, not giving billions of dollars to Kiev would be a historic mistake, according to the CIA chief, uh, stating that they're trying to drum up that money to get more money sent in over there. That's what the West is trying to do. And really and truly, what is it? They're, they're using these wars to divide the world. And quite frankly, I have a feeling Russia is going to get, is, they are going to get hit eventually because they want to break up Russia into five regional blocks. So imagine that is coming next as well. China is actively preparing for war with the United States. This here is according to the end of American Dream. And uh, I highlighted a few things in here. The U.S. cannot match the pace of building in the shipyards of Shanghai, which have already turned out two new aircraft carriers, with a third expected to begin sea trials soon. The latest vessel of the Fujian features catapults to launch heavy fixed wing aircraft with immense bomb payloads. These shipyards are building a new type of amphibious assault vessel and many roll on roll off ferries, which could have a dual purpose transporting cars in peacetime and armored assault vehicles in the event of an attack on a neighbor such as Taiwan. <clears throat> the article goes on to say here, the moment the Chinese invade Taiwan, they know that it will mean war with the United States, but that will be somewhat of a standoffish war. Uh, we'll do it more as in good faith, but, you know, they're not going to really fight. That's why Biden's administration already told the people of Taiwan, the CEOs there, you've got, I think, what was it, two years to get your battle, your, your, your facilities moved if you want to get out of Taiwan. Uh, the U.S. could try to threaten China with nukes, but if China now possesses enough missiles to wipe out dozens of U.S. cities, our leaders may not want to risk a nuclear confrontation. Not to mention, we've seen the hypersonic missiles that Russia has, and Russia claiming that they have created all these hypersonic missiles. And the intel sources that I have said that Russia got that information from China. And China is far more advanced than Russia is on hypersonic missile capabilities. And of course, their warheads, nuclear warheads, they have multiple warheads when they fire off, you know, once they come flying over super fast like that, and then they can break up into 10 different warheads or something, that, some crazy thing like that. So they are trying to position themselves for a positive outcome before the very first missile is fired at Taiwan. That is, the Chinese are doing that. Last year, the U.S. Customs Border Protection reported 37,000 Chinese citizens were apprehended crossing illegally from Mexico into the U.S. That's 50 times more than two, year, than two year earlier. 
They forgot to calculate the 320,000 that Biden flew over. So if you take, the, and I don't know how many Chinese were involved in those flights there, but let's just, let's just say it's another 50,000 or 37,000, whatever the case may be, then it's 100 times more, maybe 200 times more. This is, this is getting nuts, friends. Several European countries have raised concerns that Russia's war against Ukraine could eventually lead to a greater conflict between Moscow and NATO. The military alliance has taken several steps to bolster its defense system along its eastern border in recent months, including by conducting trainings in the spring for over 90,000 troops from all 32 member states and countries that share a border with Russia, such as the Baltic nations and Poland. 90,000 troops is nothing. Look at the death tolls in Ukraine. Unprecedented. This here, this is actually also, this rabbi here has also made it up on RT. They did a, a special about this. And uh, this is very disturbing coming from a man that's supposed to be a religious authority and figure in Israel. The basic rule we have when fighting in the holy war. This is where he's going to go. Let's listen in. In this case in Gaza, according to the doctrine, do not spare any soul. Let me, I'm going to, I need to listen to what he says myself. One second, I can, I'm not hearing super well. I don't have the best hearing there. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit there. And the logic of this is very clear. If you don't kill them, they will attempt to kill you. Today, saboteurs are the children of the previous war whom we kept alive. And in reality, it's the women who created the terrorist. And he is saying that, by the way. And this means that principle of do not... Whoop, let's back it up. Do not spare any soul. It's very clear in our concept. It's either you or them. In reality, do not spare any soul. He who comes to kill you in the afternoon, kill him in the morning. The one who comes to kill you here in the broad sense is not the person who is 18, 16, 20, 30 years old. The one who points his weapon, but also the next generation. And those who give birth to the next generation. Because in reality there is no difference. The elderly people, the elderly people, the elderly man is capable of carrying a rifle and shooting. Therefore, the Torah concept is very clear in the rule. In Gaza, according to the estimates from the IDF, 95 to 98% want to annihilate us. This is the silent majority. So the question is asked, the children too should be killed? He says the same thing. Same thing. That's, hang on. And that's because you... When the Torah says, do not spare any soul, then you must not spare any soul. And he must spare any soul. Today, he is a child. Today, he is a youth. Tomorrow, he is a fighter. The fighters of those whom you call saboteurs who are 18 years old, or old today. They are 8 years old in the previous war. Therefore, you must not stop killing. I, I, I'm blown away by this. 
making a justification, taking the Bible and justifying for himself to kill women and children and the elderly. I'm going to put it in the links for you below there. This, this is just heart-wrenching to me. Oh, but don't forget, if they're virgins, if you want to go by that too, you can keep them alive for yourself. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Israel securing Cyprus port uh, in fear of war with Hezbollah. That's something they're working on now because they're getting ready to go to war with Hezbollah. And they're talking about, I think, in March of launching a full-scale invasion on Lebanon. So Israel's taking advantage of all these wars going on uh, with Ukraine and the West getting bogged down in that. The election coming up, knowing that Trump's already said he will support them no matter what. They're taking, they're taking advantage of that. Uh, one last thing here, military transport plane crashes in Russia after takeoff. One of the engines caught fire, uh, and this actually caught on video there. It's a military transport plane. Don't know as of yet what the cause was. Was it sabotage or whatever? But the plane does go down. It crashes near a cemetery there. Uh, the pilot got it flown away from uh, any major cities there so it wouldn't crash in a major city. Uh, and I, I don't know, I didn't look at the article in completeness yet, but I know there were 18 people, or 15 people on board, eight of those were crew members, and, uh, and, and I'm assuming that everyone probably died on the, um, on the plane, but it doesn't mention that in the article. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Keep our family in your prayers, if you would. We greatly appreciate it there. And uh, and and two, one thing I will mention, and I'm not doing this as a commercial. I got, I just got to tell you one thing though that you really might want to think about this LifeWave product. Uh, I started wearing what they call their Energy Patch because I've been having a really bad problem with being tired and sleepy a lot. That was, the, that was the patch that was developed for the Navy SEALs. I got it mixed up. I thought it was the X-49. That's the one that was developed for the Navy SEALs. And, um, and I watched David Schmidt do a, um, a, a video about the technology, the studies that were done behind this particular patch when he first developed it. Uh, this was developed many, many years ago by the company. And I was absolutely blown away. I had no idea... It, it, not only does it give you the energy, but it improves mood. It, uh, there, because of the photolight therapy and how it works in the body, it also uh, helps to stimulate the production of NAD at a cellular level. Uh, anybody knows anything about NAD, I have, I have been intrigued with NAD for a number of years because it's very good for the cognitive uh, uh, capabilities. And I would do, every once in a while, I've done it about three times in my life, the intravenous version of NAD, and that's expensive. It was like 500 bucks to do something like that. But I was suffering so bad with memory and cognitive issues uh, before I ever started the LifeWave products that I ended up, I had to do something. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I couldn't remember names, couldn't remember so many things that I was starting to struggle with on that. And then finding out that this patch called the Energy Enhancer actually causes your body to produce NAD at a cellular level. And so I'm wondering why the cognitive capability is better and it's non-transdermal and I don't have to take caffeine pills every day anymore. And you know, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. So uh, if you wanna try something like that out, just go to our website, lifewave.com forward slash Benoon. I'll put that in the link below for you and try it for yourself. Uh, you know, especially, you know, the people, and you don't have to wear it every day or anything like that, you know, but if you're traveling, like this past weekend, I was up all day, worked all day, I get up early in the morning around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, worked all day, I needed to make a quick emergency run back to Tennessee, drove till the wee hours of the morning, got to the house, laid down two hours, got right back up, worked all day long, and I still wasn't tired when I went to bed, and that's because I didn't even take them off. And they were designed for the Navy SEALs to be able to last 48 hours to give them a non-drug, non-stimulant energy boost. 
and it, it uses your fat in your body to produce it. And so it's amazing. It really, uh, I'm just, I'm blown away by it anyway. So, uh, and, and, you know, so, hey, try it out. You might, you might like it. And, uh, and, and X39 that stimulates your stem cells, this is really amazing. This stuff is really amazing. And the testimonies just keep coming in. Uh, if you want to check out some of those testimonies, we got a Facebook page, and that is called Benoon X39. It's right here. You can check that. In fact, I got that study on this uh, energy patch right on our Facebook page there. Benoon X39 is the name of our, or actually Benoon X39, the life wave. Uh, come join us over there, and uh, you can see that I, I like to post the studies that are done and the testimonies, but especially the studies because... That's where you can find out the scientific uh, information about it. Uh, Lisa, her family's testimony, just incredible. Uh, you've got Dr. Sellers that's on here with us. Uh, Dr. has another amazing testimony as well. Uh, Dr. Um, uh, Tesla also sharing because he understands the technology. So we post this over on our on our Facebook page here if you want to check that out. And I'll put a link for that too in the description below. Uh, anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.